Have you consumed any bugs lately? Our guest, Associate Professor of Entomology at Montana State University, Dr. Florence Dunkel, wants to know why. Thanks for joining us, Florence. You're welcome. Let's you have some... Eat, eating bugs isn't... Uh, I see you've got bugs there, but eating bugs is not a new proposition. They're, they're eaten in many places today. Where do, where do they enjoy them most, do you think? What countries and why? I think the countries that enjoy insects the most are really Thailand and that part of Asia, as well as Mexico and uh, Latin America. Oh, South Africa also. Lots of delicious food insects down there too. You brought a few bugs along today. What, what do you have there? I did. What I have right here uh, is a little cup full of freeze-dried locusts, which are very similar to grasshoppers. Their behavior and reproductive patterns are just a little different. These are freeze-dried, so the shelf life is very, very long, but they're not going to be as yummy, yummy as um, fresh locusts. But um, they're easy to pull off the shelf and make a quick hors d'oeuvre. Uh, these I particularly like they're a big insect, you can see, and you're supposed to take the wings off before you really eat them. And there's a main meat is in the abdomen and then in the head. The head is the best. What does the head taste like, Florence? It tastes, um, there's kind of a grass flavor to it. It's something that you would want to put maybe some soy sauce with or saute a little bit with um, butter, mm. but it has a very delicious aftertaste. Oh my, that's really good. That's Tell really me what good. else you brought. What, what other kinds of bugs are eaten? Is this one of the top five bugs, would you say, eaten today? Yes, I think this is the top five. It's the top number one, probably, along with just grasshoppers. Number two might be crickets. Number three would probably be Silk moth pupae, that's a byproduct of the silk making process. Uh, number four and five um, hmm, might be beetle larvae and uh, other uh, lepidopteran larvae, so other moth larvae. Are there other bugs that you don't eat by themselves but put into foods? And, and what is the source of proteins and that kind of thing and, and vitamins and minerals in these bugs? Okay, here are two products that are um, good. These are beetle larvae. This is a smaller one and this is a larger one. These I like to pull off the shelf if I have to quick make a batch of brownies, especially for kids, because I can saute these larvae in uh, butter and just incorporate them into the brownie. And what does it do? It makes a very fortified brownie. So it would be like having a brownie together with a three ounce steak, together with a glass of milk, and then added much more iron than you get from the meat. You know, we sort of joke about bugs, but it, it, the reality is our, our food supplies are sort of dwindling, you, you would say. Uh, tell me about that. Okay, well, we're doing some very unsustainable practices right now. We're using way too much water to produce the food for the cows and the beef and the other large animals that we eat. The insects are way more efficient in using the food that we do give them. They also reproduce much more quickly, insects, correct? Yes, insects generally have a 30-day life cycle. Cows have a 600 day life cycle. They have a two year life cycle, 24 months. Insects have about a one month life cycle generally. So Florence, for those that are, uh, wanna go out there and, and try some bugs, where can they go for more information? Well, they can go to futurefood2050.com.